Hello everyone, my name is Maddie and I've never owned an electric vehicle. It's tough to say I'm fully charged. It's finally time to get rid of what we call the gas guzzler. But that was the past, this is the future and I am going electric. This video is very much about going through the process of choosing an electric vehicle, finding out what's right for me, but also aiming to settle some of those apprehensions you might have if, like me, you're at the start of your journey into getting an EV. And today I've come to the Electric Vehicle Experience Centre in Milton Keynes, where a whole host of experts have kindly agreed to help answer some of my initial questions. But I have been doing some of my own research at home and this is how that went. We're starting here and Robert suggested going to the Green Car Guide, so that's where I am now. And straight up it's giving me a buyer's guide, a green car buyer's guide, so that seems pretty spot on. So I guess the first step to getting an electric car is finding out what's there on the market and working out what it is that I actually need from a car. So whatever car I end up getting, I want it to I, I, I want charging to be as accessible as possible. So really, I want charging to be like off the charts over here, but that's something I don't really understand yet. We need to find out what the different charges are and what these kilowatts mean. So if I am charging at home, do I need to have an electric vehicle charging point at home? You don't need to, but we do recommend it. Okay, so if I don't, let's say I don't have space for one, mm -hmm. could I just charge it off the same plug that I plug my kettle into? You could do, if you need it to, yes. What's the next level up? The next level is seven kilowatts, which we call fast charging. Fast charging? Yeah. And that's if you were to get a charge point installed at home? Yeah. And is that also something you would come across if you were out and about at a supermarket? Correct, yeah, supermarket, shopping mall, um, yeah, literally anywhere where you're going to spend a few hours, yeah. um, you, there will often be a fast charger there. Okay, and then what's the top dog? Right now uh, it's 50 kilowatts, we call that rapid charging. Okay, Yeah. and that's super quick. So that, yeah, that's pretty quick. You're talking 40 minutes for 10 to 80% roughly, depending on the Whoa. vehicle. Whoa, yeah. 40 minutes? Yeah. The Volkswagen e-Golf, we've got the Nissan Leaf. Um, what else? The Hyundai Ionic, electric, Ionic, I don't know. The BMW i3 and the Hyundai Kona. Okay, Hyundai Kona is coming out first, but why? I don't know. What? 279 miles. That is way higher. Ooh, Kona is looking good, but it's expensive. Um, I'd quite like to test drive a Tesla because why on earth wouldn't you? If anyone tells you there's not much choice, they're lying because there's loads. This is all much more flexible than I thought it could be. Yeah. This is great. Also, this is looking much more achievable because I don't suddenly need to have £25,000 lying around to be able to get a car in the first place. Exactly. So there are lease options. This is great. So we do recommend, um, you know, go go to try the cars. You, mm. you know, sit in it, drive it, experience the vehicle. It's really difficult to know what you want just by looking at it online. So we're going to go and test drive some. I'm going to hop in, press some buttons and see how I get on. I'm going to be honest, I don't quite know how to turn the thing on. Power, that, that's a good start. Oh, whoa! Whoa! I didn't need to brake. Why didn't I need to brake? Wow! That is so clever! That's strange. It's like the car is reading your mind. But I took my foot off the accelerator and automatically the car started to slow itself down. And that is something called regenerative braking or regen. If you drive an EV, this might make sense, but I do mean it when I say it, sound, it feels more like a partnership and it feels like the car is helping me out. It wants me to drive it well and it wants me to drive it efficiently and safely and it's doing its best 
to help me do that. I think there might be an assumption that if you have an electric car, it's not going to have much juice, it's not going to be very powerful, but that absolutely is not the case. Like, this is really fun. Like, it's got quite a bit of, like, you know, get up and go about it, so that's fun. Like, this is genuinely getting me excited about, you know, having a car like this. If you are like me on the journey to becoming an EV driver, that you don't have to handle this alone. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and I think it can, all the information can seem really daunting, but actually there are so many people and services like yourselves and like the place we are now who really want you to have a positive experience with this Absolutely. and will make your life easy, but also super personal. And actually this doesn't have to be a scary thing. I'll say that at the beginning of this journey, I knew that I wanted to be part of the EV club, but. I had some apprehensions and those are slowly dissolving. So I'm in a really good place. And I've even got an idea about the car I'm going to pick. Today is the day that the new car turns up. I'm very curious to know whether any of you have guessed which one I picked. Here it is, here it is. Okay, it's coming in now. Da, 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 da. The car has arrived. <laughs> Wow! Oh, I'm so excited! So I have gone with the Kia e-Nero because it is a lovely car and the extensive range is absolutely a comfort blanket to me because I'm completely new to this. But I did want to say that I've got the Kia e-Nero on a short term lease, which will give me plenty of time to get to grips with driving an EV, but also by the end I should be able to work out whether this is the right car for me long term. So this is a very recognisable plug. So this is definitely yeah. something that I can use to charge the car at home. Yes. Not every single electric car will have the same connector. It's a bit of a minefield. This one at the top mm -hmm. is what you'll use um, most of the time, which is your seven kilowatt charging, which is what you're doing at home. So that is seven kilowatt charger. Yeah. You can also connect the three pin plug, which yeah. does it at about three kilowatts or sort of smaller, slower charging uh, unit. Mm -hmm. And then if you were to go to a rapid charger, yeah. you take off both of these. Yeah. And it's a bit like a puzzle. Right, you just, when you get to the charging unit, you just see the one that looks like that, and that'll be the one for your car. Plugged into the wall, I'm now giving the Type 2 connector to Robin, who's handily outside for me. Will it reach? Will it reach? Is it gonna go? Yeah! Awesome! Look, look what we have charging out of our kitchen window. I heard a load of kerfuffle, but I didn't want to interrupt. Ah! Ah! Robert! Yeah! It's a beauty! We have the Robert De Niro. This Robert, not yeah. Robert Llewellyn. Although yeah. he's also a beauty. I have just about mastered slow charging at home with the new electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, but I need something a little bit quicker. So I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a fast charger nearby. What yep. I'm being told we call destination chargers. Yep. But I don't know how to find them. But Zap Map's a map of public charging points all around the UK. Okay. So there's over 10,000 public charge points available for, for people to charge at yeah. um, and over 15,000 devices. Does that surprise people? Because 10,000 is a lot. Yeah, it's, it's an awful lot of charging points. And in fact, um, there are more charging locations than there are petrol stations. And that definitely surprises people. Wow, mm. I, I would not have thought that at all, actually. I'm finally biting the bullet and I'm going in search of a charge point. So this is going to be my first proper charge away from the house. Ah, interestingly, there is one at a local pub, which I didn't expect. Hey! That's it. It really is that simple. It's just a plug. Plug in the wall. My one is just there, and all I need to do is get my cable out and connect the two. Surely, surely this is too easy. In it goes, no drama. Gosh, I really don't have to do anything. I don't even have to download an app. This is the other end of the Type 2. Plug it in, wait for something to happen. That's locked in place, I can hear it click, and if we're charging, it should go green. It's going green. This was so easy! 
we have decided to get a home charge point. The charge points will have a high powered circuit um, installed with the installation. Um, so it makes it a lot different to just plugging into your normal home yes. uh, socket, for example. Right, yeah. and there are multiple benefits. Um, for me personally, the reason for getting one was just that it's more convenient. Yeah. I don't have any destination chargers locally that naturally fit in with my life. I don't particularly want to go sit in a car park for two, three hours. moment um, Paul the electrician is installing the zappy um, it's all going really well and I have to say the experience has been really easy all I had to do was go through a comparison tool on the right charge website which told me the one that was good for me and then I got in touch with the installers and I had to take a couple of photos yeah and that's kind of it I will say it, it is still expensive, but when you think about the benefits and if you're going to be staying at your property for quite a long time, over the course of a few years, you will eventually end up hopefully getting that money back or making that money back. I reckon installation took about two, three hours. Yeah. So that was completely fuss free. And I actually really like the way it looks. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite proud to actually have a charge <laughs> point at the front of my house. It's not an eyesore at all. No. Right, let's have a go at actually charging the car. Um, so I'm just gonna open up the charge flap. I'm gonna plug this into the car. There we go, the lights come on. So that's good, good. that means it's working. All right, we're in business. This is making noises. Uh huh, here we go. Right, okay. All right, so you can see now we've got a display on the front of the charger which is giving you some information. Yeah. Um, but because this is smart, it's, mm -hmm. it's connected to your home internet. So yeah. that means that you can actually communicate with it via your phone. Facts. Here we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> I've already downloaded the app. <laughs> uh, in general, a smart charger will give you the ability to um, see the data, so mm -hmm. like, see your charging sessions and how much they cost, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but they can also mean that you can change the settings from your phone itself. Yeah. And I can do that from my phone. So right now it's pretty chilly outside, yeah. but I can kind of <laughs> determine what I want the charge point to do from inside the house, from my phone. Don't exactly. need to come out here and program anything at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah. You get an electric vehicle, and then you get a charge point, and then you get solar, and then you get a battery storage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First the electric car, now a home charge point. We are slowly but surely becoming fully fledged electric car owners with all of the mock-ons. There is nothing better than being able to just pull up on your own driveway and plug the car in to get, you know, the mileage that you need. It's so easy, it really is as simple as charging a phone. Here's the thing, I am actually looking to sign up with a new energy supplier, but since we've got the electric car, I am a lot more conscious about who that might be. Because if we've gone greener with the car, I don't then want to be filling it with electricity that might be supporting a supplier that aren't supporting renewables. You know, if we're gonna go green with a car, you know, let's really think about where that energy comes from. But there are lots of options. I've been online and it's a little bit confusing as to who is going to give us a good rate, but also give us, you know, also allow us to genuinely 100% support renewable energy. The great news is that there is a lot of choice out there for mm. you. Three years ago, there were just under 10% of energy deals out there that were offering you renewable electricity tariffs. Right. Today, over half of the deals on the market are saying that they've got renewable um, electric offers for you. So if I wanted to go for someone that is claiming to have 100% renewable energy, like what are my options now? We know that at the top end of the scale, there's some great suppliers out there that are actually offering you 100%. They are spending the money in terms of either buying directly from a generator who has got a solar farm or a wind farm to source that electricity and put it into the grid. Okay. Or they're doing it themselves. They're setting up their farms and saying, right, we're going to invest in renewable electricity and that's what's going to be matching exactly the usage of their customers that they're selling to. If you want to power your own electricals with 100% renewable energy, the only way to do it is just cut out the grid and actually make your own energy at home. Um, and that brings us to the likes of or wind turbines, but mainly solar panels and then battery storage.
Um, solar panels allow you to produce your, your own electricity. Mm. So normally you, you receive your electricity from the national grid. Yeah. And with solar panels, you have a second supply of electricity coming from your roof. And um, it allows you to charge your electric car with purely green electricity. I can power the car with sunshine. Exactly. Which, there's yeah. just something so wonderful yeah. about that. Yeah. And it's free. Yes. The sun, the government hasn't found a way of taxing the sun yet. Yes, yes, I love that. So very often people who have an electric car will use it to commute to work. Mm -hmm. And when they're producing solar electricity, the car is basically in the wrong place. Right, because it's yeah. a sunny, sunny day, the car is in the car park at work. Exactly, Got so it. what you can do is install battery storage and battery storage allows you to soak up this excess solar. So your house will need some electricity during the day, mm. but a lot of it will be superfluous, and that can go straight into your battery. And then when you come home in the evening and plug your car into your charging point, yeah. it will draw this stored solar electricity out of the battery into your car. Because there's actually something um, quite powerful about, about being in control of your own energy usage. Yes. I think that's a change that's happening. Basically, when you have an electric car, mm. your home becomes an electric car home. Yes. In the old days, your, your diesel petrol car was on the drive and it wasn't connected to your house. Right. And now with a, a cable, to, connected to your charging point, it's like a, an umbilical cord. Yeah. So you have your, your baby car, electric car, yeah. connected to the mother home, yes. and there, there is a, an intimate connection. Right. And this is now how people's lives will, will change, mm. um, and you will interact with your car. Yeah. And at the moment, everything is from the home to the car, yeah. but in the future, your car will also provide electricity to your home mm. and to the grid. So this is something to look forward to. This is the first time that we've gone under 100 miles. Now that is still plenty, plenty. We could still get to Otley. Is there anything? Is there anything? Yeah, that's making you feel a little bit squeaky. Well, yeah, because I'd seen three digits on the uh, on the range miles, and now it's on two digits. So I'm a little bit like, oh, okay, yeah, we're running out. Okay, so we are turning into the services now, and I can see a little picture for an electric charger on our map which is brilliant, but now of course we just need to find where you charge your cars. Okay, here we go. First time with the rapid charger. 20 minutes later, we've had a bite to eat, grabbed a coffee, and now we're going back to the charge, the charge point. 89 miles. <laughs> Did that not work? Did we not? Maybe we didn't need that, it didn't seem rapid. We're going to arrive with about 50 miles, 50 mile range left, which is not what we intended at all. This does mean that tomorrow we're going to have to go out and find that one charger that is in the area, but we will get it right. We will use the correct rapid connector and hopefully we will see that range shoot right up so we know that we can get out of here um, comfortably. <laughs> now, we're pretty sure that where we messed up yesterday is that we simply used the wrong connector to get a rapid charge despite being told to use that one, but whatever. We've not used one of these before. We're quite new to all this. Uh, we've used one before and we just plugged it in and we paid for it through an app. How do we pay for yours? It says use our charge card, but we don't have one. Okay, so the CCS, hopefully that will fit in that, won't it? Is the CCS the, the combo? Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool, yes. Yeah. Charge card accepted! Hey! Okay, now it's going to you to plug in. We've got two minutes to plug it in. Okay. All right. Plugging in the vehicle. Go for it, Greg. All right, we're now connecting the vehicle as we speak. Okay. He's and just... then you need to press OK on the screen after that's connected. All right, then. No pressure, Greg. You've got one minute, 43 seconds. He's done it. Okay. Get a crystal for the crystal oh, maze. Communication set up with the... Your request has been processed. We're done. It's doing it. The lights on the car have come on. We are officially charging. Well done. So, <laughs> just to check, this combo... This combo is definitely a rapid charger, isn't it? It sounds like it's rapid. The machine's going for it. Woo! So we know it's rapid charging because you can actually hear it. Um, it's definitely a noisier machine. But here on the dashboard, um, we can see what's happening. So right now there are 39, 39 to 40 kilowatts being shoved into our battery and it will take about an hour to get to 80%. I really enjoyed it. Have you, Greg? Yeah, it's been great. We cracked it in the end. 
and that is a wrap on Maddie Goes Electric. We would love to know your thoughts on this series and if you have any ideas for future episodes you'd like us to consider then just leave them as a comment down below. If you've enjoyed these episodes share them, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon if you want to get notified whenever we upload new videos, all of that good stuff and if you have been thanks for watching I'm sure I'll see you soon. Bye! Yes, we will be seeing Maddie again soon. She will return later this year for a second series, Maddie's Electric Home. Ooh. So do subscribe or click the notification bell on YouTube to be alerted. You don't want to miss it.